Hello. Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Anthony today. I am working as technical architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present day 24th of the Riley Code Challenge. The problem that we have in today is search a 2D matrix 2. Here in this question we are given a matrix of size M cross N wherein the elements are sorted along the rows and across the columns. What we need to do, we need to tell whether a particular target element exists in this matrix or not. If it does, then we need to return true. If it doesn't, then we need to return false. For all those who have been following along, we have already solved a very similar kind of a question which is search a 2D matrix and if you go and check out the constraints, they are almost the same. So here is a video, I will be using the same concept that I have highlighted in this video as well and if I go and check out the Java solution that is mentioned over here, then the same solution will get accepted. So for those who are not aware of the algorithm behind it, let's walk through the presentation and I'll be explaining it there. Search a 2D matrix to lead code 240. It's a medium level question and I also feel the same. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on your telegram group or the discord server. Both the links are stated below. Now let's get back to the same example that was specified in the question. We have a 2D matrix and we need to search for a particular element and here the element in this case happens to be 5. We are also told that all the elements are sorted across rows and columns. So if you pick up, pick up any row then you will see that the row is sorted and if you pick up any column for example this one again the elements would be sorted. What do we do in such problems? We either start from the top right corner which is 15 or bottom left corner which is 18 and let's hypothetically assume that the target element happens to be 5 and we will create two pointers which is basically acting as the identity of a cell. Here the row pointer is pointing to the last row and column pointer is pointing to the first column. We compare this value with 5. So if you observe then 18 is greater than 5 as a result of which we can simply discard all the elements towards the right of 18. So this entire row can be discarded. We simply reduce the row pointer by one unit and now row pointer points over here. Again we compare 10 with 5. 10 is much greater than 5 as a result of which we can simply discard all the elements towards its right. Let's simply reduce the row pointer. Row pointer now points over here and column pointer is still at the 0th index. Now we get 3. At 3 we make a comparison with 5. Since 3 is lower than 5, there is a possibility that 5 may lie towards the right of 3. Therefore we will be incrementing the column pointer this time. The column pointer gets incremented over here. Again, we check whether this current value which is 6 is greater than equal to or less than 5. Since it is greater than 5, what do we do? All the elements towards the right of the current element can't be equal to 5 because it would be greater than 6 as a result of which we simply reduce the row count. When we reduce the row count, where we land? We land at this particular position and then we can make a we again make a comparison with 5 since both of them turns out to be equal, we simply return true from there and then itself. This is what I told in search in uh, in a 2D matrix, a 74, lead code 74. And I have exactly explained the same algorithm over here as well. Now let's quickly move on to the coding section and conclude it up. The time complexity of this particular approach is order of row count plus column count. Because in the worst case, what could happen? You iterate along uh, all the rows one by one and then you iterate along all the columns that we have. So there could be possibility that you start from over this particular element and you find that particular the target element over here. Therefore in the worst case the time complexity would be the number of rows that you have and the number of columns that you have. Without further ado let's quickly walk through the coding section. Here I have created two pointers one for the number of rows that we have other one for the number of columns that we have and uh, these are like few corner cases in case my row index the total number of rows that we have is zero or total number of columns that we i have is zero then i should return false in those cases otherwise i go ahead and create two pointers i signifies the last row index row index and j signifies the column index that we are currently at and uh, i have initialized j to zero and i to m minus one this signifies that i am starting from the bottom uh, left index left element and while i is greater than 0 j is less than n i extract the current element i compare it with the target if it is equal 
then I return true. Otherwise, if it is greater than target, I simply reduce the ith pointer. Otherwise, I increment the jth pointer and j signifies the column index. Once I'm out of the loop, uh, in case this true condition was never met, I simply return false. So let's try this up. Why is it taking so much time? So it is 50% faster and which is pretty good. Uh, probably I'm on a slower network. I'm connected to VPN right now. Uh, so let's ignore that. As I talked about the time complexity of this approach is order of R plus C. And space complexity is again constant time. With this, let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Also, in case you're interested in more solutions, more problems of, on the concept of matrices, then you can check out Coding Decoded SD Preparation Sheet. And here I have provided the most critical questions from interviews perspective on the topic of matrices. So do check this revision sheet out. And here you will find questions which are there in the increasing order of complexities, easy, medium and hard. And you'll find some of the interesting questions as well. So do try those that are specified with double asterisk signs because they're highly likely to be asked in interview. Over to you guys. Take care. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question.